engineer Orlando Waju Smith. Uh, well, yesterday we visited the Onya Dam with the Minister of uh, Water Resources and the team of the Ogunshun River Basin Development Authority, at least to conduct spot assessment on what exactly is the activity on the dam. And we saw part of the activities at the dam include fishery. Indeed, yesterday they were releasing the water at uh, a flow rate that is not so much like previous days. However, we observe fishing activity, aquaculture activities at the dam. And in addition to that, after inspecting the facility, we now come together as a community to look at what exactly could be the root cause of this excessive release of water. And we drew a line that the aquaculture activity might conflict with flood mitigation and flood control, which is another purpose of the dam. So we are now requesting from the Ministry of Water Resources to prioritize, reprioritize, and put human lives first before aquaculture. In that way, the team on the dam site will be able to reduce the level of the water, especially in August, where we have the three weeks drought in August, to prepare for the large volumes of uh, water that will come up in the later rains, that is between September and November. With that, if you, will, if you make adequate proactive uh, preparation, you will have a situation where there will be redundancy on the dam for storage of water that will take high intensity, long duration rainfall on the uplands for as much as eight to 10 days. So this will be a win-win, and this would be what will now the um, dam uh, management would manage throughout the drought period, supplying Lagos, water to Lagos State and Abel Kuta. That is for the water supply, domestic water supply, as well as the irrigation downstream. So this will be a win-win. And to God be the glory today, the Minister of uh, Environment has come to further assure us that they are going to start a study on the Ogun River to work on all the constriction that is causing, uh, that is restraining flow in such a way that when the water, the river is desilted, the capacity will be increased. And with that, there will be easy discharge down the lagoon. And the Ogun State Governor, on his own part, has assured us the project he started, because he's the first governor that has come to this community to start the, channel, the primary drainage channelization project, which stopped at 53%. In fact, because of that project, we had about six days of respite when water was released. So he has assured us he's going to complete that project and to discharge at the Lagos Lagoon. With that, there will be ease of flow when water spills over the embankment on the Ogun River, straight to discharge at the lagoon. And also, the Minister of Environment will also look at adequate shoreline protection in such a way that there will be shoreline protection for the water not to just spill over on land because the whole of this area is a flood plain. There is nothing like abutment, it's just a vast flood plain that water will be dispersed partially and across the communities, which make the devastation without channelization so serious. So these are some of the things the government said they are going to do. And we as a people with the um, closing remark of the governor and the minister, we are going to work hand in hand with the government to ensure this is achieved because it is the development the communities are yearning for. It is the infrastructure the community are yearning for as palliative. And as we said earlier, the communities here are not hungry people. What we demand from government is not the rice, is not the yam, is not the food. We are not hungry. Our hunger and thirst is for development, is for infrastructure. And with the renewed hope and assurance from government today, we are going to hold them accountable for performance, for what they have re-promised us again today. And that is the steers going forward. And that is how we are going to work to support them in delivering on all they promised here today. The flood this year had been devastating. There had been displacement of people. A number of people are now being housed in places of worship. The churches and the mosques around are now housing people as IDP, IDP camps. 
a number of people lost their vehicles to flood properties and we've had for the first time we've had three fatalities in this community and no amount of money can bring back life so it has never been this disastrous the students the children cannot go to school because schools have been shut down imagine cutting off academics the children academics have been cut off from the community they cannot learn it is as if you're robbing them of their right and we don't know how this will long uh, will last socioeconomic activities are on a standstill in addition to the devastation so when you look at this the sanitary condition had been negatively impaired the waters have been contaminated the boreholes have been contaminated it's like an emergency situations for the communities especially the negative the um, worst heat around Isheri and then some parts of Banku and Mokore so these are some of the things that we really the government really need to see how they can come to ameliorate their uh, position they are suffering at this point in time and uh, we were happy when the governor said the Minister of Humanitarian Resources is coming to the community in the next two days. So we are expecting her to see how they can bring succor to some of these people that have been displaced. Because a lot of resources from this um, religious organization housing people had been deployed without any form of government assistance. So I believe when, that, when she comes around with her team, there will be some form of palliative to these people that had been worst hit. My name is Engineer Orlan Rewaju Smith. You're part of the community leader? Yes, I am a member of the community and a stakeholder. Because leadership is all about service. It's not a title like chieftaincy title. When you call yourself a leader, it's more about your service. What are you going to do to your community? So I see myself as a servant. Let us improve the well-being of our brothers. We are all human beings. So remove the title. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Bumia Kionlua. I'm one of the community leader in Banku, to be precise, Banku Zone 9. Uh, I'm here with you know, some other leaders, Mr. Falale, Engineer Smith. Yeah, we experience this water issue, this flood every year. And the bad thing is that when it is you know, July, August, September, you know, when we are getting to this season, you know, people are sick already, even before the arrival of the flood. At the moment, you know, in my CDA, I have someone, you know, he has to be, you know, calm, he, uh, he's trying to calm his wife down. The wife was going through emotional stress as a result of this water. They don't know how to, you know, where to take their children to. So in my estate, I mean, in my city, 70% of the people have moved out to another place. Sometimes they come regularly to come and take their belongings. And in one of the occasions, you know, while coming, a python had been killed. You know, we won't have the video of the python. But thank God for the you know, security you know, around who we were able to kill it. So this thing, this blood issue is really causing you no know, economic you know, disaster. Children, so many schools have closed already. Secondary school, primary school, they've closed. When you cannot take the children to school, do you understand? So it's really causing an issue. Yes, you know when we saw the water, you no know, under the Long Bridge, you no know, we called meeting, you no know, contribute money, two million, two million plus within two days, so that we can raise the height of the level. But to our disappointment, because of the volume of the water that was released by Oyo Dam, it is it still cover the you know the whole road. At the moment, people cannot go to work. Well, I was coming to come and meet with this meeting. You know, I had to you know, take two shoes and a towel to dry my clothes because if I should get you know, like that to the venue of the meeting, they will chase me back. You understand? So that's the, that's the whole situation. It's not funny at all. Thank you, mm. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir.